Hello, Janusz here. Welcome to this video about the first steps with Wicked Engine, kind of the first video when I talk about uh, features of the engine, really. So, the thing you see here is the GitHub page for this project. And with any GitHub page for any repository which you want to check out, at first you want to check out the readme file. But I tried to write down a lot of details about this engine. For example, first you will see the links for the Discord community. You can join here if you want to ask questions. Also, there are links for the pre-built binary versions, one for the GitHub builder, one for the AppWayer builder. The GitHub builder will provide uh, versions for the Windows and Linux versions, and the AppWayer, this one, will have only the Windows version. But if any of those fails, then the other will be hopefully still around. Anyway, there is also the Microsoft Store version, which is more irregularly updated. The reason for that is it's a pain to submit and publish a build on the Microsoft Store. It can take several days when it goes through some testing process. So I try to do, do publish main versions, but it's kind of less frequent than, the, than these ones. Apart from that, there are links for the documentation, platforms, how to set up your projects, and a lot of GIFs too. And the code samples for initialization, C++ code samples, Lua scripting code samples, some images and other things, information. So let's say you want to download your engine. What to do next? Well, you can download it with uh, just a pre-built binary version. The good thing about that is it's pretty simple to just download it, um, unzip it, and just try to run the editor, see if it even works for you or not, and if you even like it. You can download it from here or here, the GitHub Actions tab. Let's go do it from here for now. And the build and the nightly build are containing the latest versions. The build is the very latest. It contains the latest pushes, the builds for them, the nightly build contains builds that were built every day or every night. If you go to the latest one, you are interested in getting the artifacts, which you can find by scrolling down. For now, let's download the artifacts or the zipped content assets for the editor Windows version. There are also the Ubuntu, Ubuntu Windows, Linux version, but since I am on Windows right now, let's download the Windows one. Okay, I actually already downloaded it, so I just cancelled this and I unzipped it. What you see when you when you unpack the editor is like this. It contains a lot of content, like models, various textures and stuff, and the editor itself. You can just start it by clicking on the editor Windows EXE. It will just start up immediately, hopefully and you can just control the editor however you want. For now, let's also check out how to build the version, how to build the engine from scratch from the code. So if you go back to the main page, you can download the code by going here and going to download zip for the simplest way. You can also use git and like open in Visual Studio it's more recommended to use the Git version because then you can get updates more easily, but I won't go into that right now. For now, just download the zip version. And after I downloaded it and unpacked it here, you will see this. So Wicked Engine and then Dash and the branch name, which is master for the main branch now. You will open it and see all the repository content included here just the same way as you see on GitHub. The most important thing is for the Windows version, if you want to build it, is the wickedengine.slm file, which is the solution file for Visual Studio 2019 at this point. Just double click on it and it will open the solution. This is my recommended way to build it on Windows. This is maintained by me. I consider it the most stable version. But you can also choose a Linux version that we use CMake to build it. Maybe you can also get CMake to work on Windows. I can't comment on that right now, but 
there is a small but enthusiastic Linux community working on the CMake process and it will be ever just better from here on. So what you see in the solution are a lot of projects. By default the editor windows project should be selected and highlighted and like boldened like it has the bold font. The most important thing is probably the Wicked Engine Windows, which is the static library. It doesn't have any code files, but it references the Wicked Engine source project. Here you, here you will find all the source code files just neatly organized. You might have noticed that in the repository itself, if you just browse the source files, which are in the Wicked Engine folder, you will see nearly all source files just in a single folder. Well, the files you see here are the files custom made for the engine and the other files within the folders are like third party libraries like the ballad physics engine and so on and the shaders which are not C++ but HLSL files. Anyway, you can browse the code here most efficiently. But for now, let's just build and run the editor. For that, you just have to, well, first let's just set the configuration for release because that has the best performance when you actually run the editor. And just click on this green arrow to build the solution and run it. Of course, it will now start to build a bunch of CPP files and the C++ build is usually notorious for taking too long or unreasonably long. However, since this is kind of a small project or maybe smaller than you can you expected, it can be built in just uh, one or two minutes, which is not amazing, but it's something or maybe even less than one minute now actually. Yeah, it's it's already building the editor right now. No. Okay, so now the engine is built, it must be linked, and the linking process, well, that can also take some time. It usually takes a lot of, lot of time because the link time code generation is enabled, which is kind of an optimization to for the compiler or the linker to kind of try to inline however many functions it can across even uh, CP across CPP file boundaries, perhaps. Once the compilation is done, the editor will immediately start up. And what you see here is like, like a console window, like a console application, but it is actually not the case. This is al already being rendered by the Wicked Engine font renderer. And what's happening here is that it is trying to currently build the shaders for HLSL 5, which the DirectX 11 renderer uses. And that can also be pretty slow. Actually, it's a lot slower than some of the newer shader compilers. For example, if you use the DX12 or Vulkan renderers, then the shaders will be compiled with the newer the, the, the newer DXC shader compiler, which is that is just a lot faster than this. Also, it has a lot more features, and that's the compiler which will be we will be going forward with. This is kept around for backwards compatibility. For the DX11 version can't support the, that newer compiler, unfortunately. So once the shaders are compiled, you are back in the editor, just how you found it when you downloaded the pre-built binary version. Except now that you are actually running within a debugger in Visual Studio, you can use, use the editor just regularly, or you can also go back to Visual Studio the Solution Explorer, if you find the editor project and the main CPP that's included in it, you must know that this main CPP is actually the application entry point. 
this has to be written by you but uh, if you are developing your own application but you can also just generate this with something for example these windows applications i just generated with the visual studio new windows desktop application template or whatever it's just some some minor details i expand it with such as just uh, using the editor here which uses the wiggle engine interface and if you go down to the main entry point the win main you find the message loop here which is running every frame essentially and the editor run is called this is kind of the entry point into the engine itself you can just if you are interested or curious you can press the f11 button to just go inside it and see how everything gets working and just step through it with the f10 button anyway that's it for debugging or actually some things might not be accessible within the debugger if you find that that is the case then it's probably because the release configuration is set right now if that happens to you then you must rebuild the whole project in debug mode which will be a lot slower at runtime but you will be able to more easily debug everything else okay if you want to like switch renderers for example you are interested in command line arguments that's a common question that gets asked on the discord how you can do this is go to the project properties by right clicking on your application project go to properties go to debugging and the command arguments is a text box if you choose to enable the vulkan renderer which is not enabled by default on windows the dx11 renderer is chosen by default the vulkan renderer enter just vulkan here and press ok you just have to start the project now oh sorry not start in debug because that's gonna be recompiling the whole thing instead go back to release that was already built just before this it will start immediately it, and once it doesn't break it just starts immediately compiling Balkan shaders again and you can see that by by reading that the shaders are compiled into the spear v directory which is the shader format that the Vulkan backend uses this compilation is much faster and once it's finished you are back into the editor and at the top left corner you see that the Vulkan renderer is enabled so what is good about the Vulkan renderer for example is that you can use some neat ray tracing features for example if you open the sponsor model that's provided by default like select the ground floor and uh, just sort of reduce uh, the roughness of it a bit increase reflectance so now the floor is reflective use normal maps for now enable post process ray traced reflections okay and you can see that ray traced reflections are now working properly in Vulcan that would be not possible in the X11. Anyway, this editor you might find that it's not as easy or straightforward to use as you expected. The reason for that is that this editor is obviously quite different from like a regular game engine editor. It's quite simpler and uh, the controls for it might not be obvious either. So you just use the WASDK to control the camera like in an FPS. Use the middle mouse button to rotate the camera. Use the right mouse button to select objects, for example. With the escape key, you can cancel the selection. And with the left mouse button, you seemingly can't do anything, but that's not true because you can, for example, interact with objects such as placing decals. If you enable decal placement in the decals window, then you can place decals like this, 
these are just some default decal textures that you can just play around with. You can also select things and enable the translator to move objects, like so. And uh, another kind of interaction with the left mouse button is for the water. So if you open the water test scene, which is also provided by default, you will be presented with this scene, which is which has a bit of a water, and just if you press on it with the left mouse button clicked, then you will place these water ripples down on the water surface, like so. Anyway, the editor will be described in a later video, probably. Now you could ask also if you don't want to run the editor from Visual Studio or the, any application you've built, then you might want to go to search for the exe file that was built. It will be generated to the uppercase build directory, and then the platform directory, and then debug or release. Well, we built the release version before, so let's go there, editor windows, and this is the exe that you want to run. This is also a recurring question that why you can't just run the exe from here? That's because the content is not found near the exe. So to solve this, you just copy the exe back to the root of the engine and then the editor folder here. And since the editor images and whatnot, like the icons are found near the exe, you will be able to run the editor without a problem. Okay, that's it for today. If you have any questions or if you have any ideas about future content and what, would, what you would like to see on this channel, feel free to drop into the Discord server. See you all later in the next videos.